Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're shooting three rifles to show you that BC doesn't matter. make YouTube videos they say it's gonna be fun there's the range can't even see 100 yards we'll see if the Sun burns off the uh, the clouds so welcome back today we're at the range it's a little bit of a rainy cloudy day so we've got a little bit of a weather delay wait till the Sun burns these clouds off this fog um, I'm going to shoot Three rifles. I have a 223, a six Creedmoor, and my 22 GT. What I want to show is a little bit slower rifle, uh, an average rifle, and a very fast moving rifle. I want to show you also the difference between a low BC faster bullet and a high BC bullet shooting out to 300 yards. And the reason why I chose 300 yards was that's usually our max distance when we're going coyote hunting. Um, out here in Arizona, over the last four or five years, I've made a log of all the coyotes we killed and the average is about 90 yards. And I don't think I've shot over 300 in two years. Not saying that we don't and not saying that you don't, but the average shot is under 300 yards or 300 yards and in, especially you guys in the south, in the Midwest, in the east, you have a lot of farms that you hunt and uh, your max yardage is, is somewhere around there. I know some people are gonna say, oh, I could get 440 or 500 yards or 1,000 yards, but we're not shooting coyotes at that distance usually. And if you do, it's once in a great while. So this is a good test of a high BC bullet versus a faster bullet at 300 yards. All right, I'm gonna talk about the BC of the bullet. For some of the guys who don't know what BC is, it is ballistic coefficient. And that's pretty much the aerodynamics of the bullet, how it, uh, drops with the gravity and how it's being pushed left and right from the wind. So on the 223 we have a 50 45 grain bullet and the BC is 0 .200 and then we have that 75 grain ballistic tip I'm sorry the boat tail hollow point at 395. The 6 Creekmoor my 70 grain nozzlers are 0 .310 and the 108 ELDM is 536. And then with the 22 GT, the 55 grain Sierra Blitz King is a 0.271 versus a 0.375 with a 69 grain Tip Match King. So we'll get to shooting. The weather's starting to clear up a little bit, and we'll see you downrange. Impact. You're a little bit left of center, maybe 0.3. Bullseye. All right. Now, we're zeroed. We should probably put the GoPro at 300. All right, we verified zero with these 45 grain bullets with the 223. Now we're gonna shoot. We have a target at the very top of the paper. We're gonna see where it drops. We're gonna aim at that little orange dot and shoot all five. I got my GoPro down range. Let's go. zero this one all right confirm zero with these 75 grain boat tail hollow points from Hornady I'm gonna shoot the 300 all right we're done shooting this 223 we're gonna go down range put up the six Creed target and do the whole thing again
Oh well, the wind pushed me. So there's our aiming points. And I shot five rounds. There's two and three. The other two must have been pushed off because of wind. And we do have a little bit of wind. And I did not take that into effect. And then here is the 75 grain boat tail hollow points, the super performance. It's about a three or four inch more of a drop than the 45 grain and probably just a little bit better on wind. And that's where your BC is gonna get um, really help. So uh, the BC not only helps with drop, but it also helps with wind. And that 45 grain bullet, as you can see, was pushed off the target. But we got a couple inch less drop out of that. All right, we got the targets back. And this is the 223. As you saw when me and Mitch were pulling the targets, we had uh, two there one on the edge of the cardboard and two off so the wind pushed it pretty well and it's only about a three mile an hour wind so if you look at it my calculator is supposed is supposed to drop 11 and a half inches and it dropped 19 inches and i'm just going off the velocity off the box we have an 18 inch barrel so that's where the discrepancy is and then the 75 grain bullets the hornady hotel hollow points that one right there I knew I threw that one, but again, we're not going for accuracy. We're just looking at the drop. Uh, my calculator said 16.2 inches, and it was 23 inches from that aiming point. Again, you know, we're just going off the velocities off the box. I did not chronograph these. Um, I do have an 18 inch barrel on my 223. So next we have our six Creedmoor. This is a custom paint job I did. It's our chaos receiver set. It's got the Arca handguard. It also will be running the Hushwork Suppressor. It's got the PRS Lite um, stock on it, a Timney Kelvin Elite Trigger, and I'm running an EOTech Voodoo Scope on this one. Uh, the ammo that we're going to shoot out of this is my Handload 70 grain Nosler Ballistic Tip, and then we'll shoot the 108 ELDM, which shoots really good out of this gun. I've shot out to 1,350 yards out of this one. Bullseye. My gun was sighted in. Amazing. One, three, four, five. So the six creed was already sighted in for my 70 grain. Hit the bullseye at the, at the 100. Now I'm going to shoot the paper at 300. And then I'll switch the 108 ELDMs. We're gonna let the suppressor cool for a little bit, then we'll shoot these 108 ELDMs. All right, we just verified zero with the six Creed with the 108 ELDMs. Uh, now I'm gonna shoot the 500. Uh, it's super foggy. The camera's not picking up at the uh, long range one, but we'll show you the paper when we're all done. Switch to the 22 GT and give the can a couple seconds to cool down and we'll get to the third rifle. So lastly, we have my 22 GT and an AR-15. Um, if you want to know more about the 22 GT AR-15, I'll link the video in the description below. I have a whole video on the 22 GT. So this is our billet lower. It's got a Gibbs side charge on it, MFT minimalist, our standard MFR handguard, spade composite barrel. I'm also running another US Optics 1.8 to 10, and this one will also be running the Hushworks can. So the two bullets I'm shooting today is a 55 grain sear, a Blitz King, and I believe that's going about 3,600 feet per second. And then I also have 69 grain uh, sear tip match kings going about 3,350. Not too much of a swing there, um, but we're a little bit restricted on the bullet selection on the 22 GT. 69 grain is probably one of the uh, longer, uh, higher BC bullets that you shoot out of the AR-15 version. If you wanted to shoot a longer bullet, we can make it an AR-10 as well. But I do this one for predator hunting. I usually use a 45 grain or 55 grain bullet, uh, and I'm pushing them, the 45 grainers, almost 3,900 feet per second. And then, so we'll see what this does at 300 yards, uh, the drop between the 55 and the 69 grain. I'm going 
take a tenth off and then just do the five rounds. All right. All right, so we got the 22 GT dialed in at 100. We got five shots. We're going to take it out to three. Let's see where it goes. And then we'll do the 69 grain TMPs next. and then go to 300 again. Far right target, far right circle. Come on, you're ready. You good? We'll go down range, we'll see what they all look like, and then we'll see which bullet did a better job at 300 yards. This one will hit you great. Yeah. So there's my 70 grainers, um, and here's my hand. So I don't know, that's probably a three and a half, four inch group. And then that's a 108 ELDM. So there's not too much difference in drop. The 70 grains beat it just a little bit. And we're not looking at group size. I didn't do low development on any of those. The 108s are factory, and they shoot really well. I've taken this gun out to 1,350 yards. So there's not much difference on these six Creedmoors. Just the, the tiniest bit if you center up that 70 grain. Three quarters of an inch. <coughs> yeah, yeah. And then same thing with the 22 GT. Um, again, we're not looking for, for accuracy. I didn't do low development. I just loaded up these um, without even seeing what shoots good out of my gun. So the uh, again, the aiming points are up there. This is the 55 grain Sierra Blitz Kings. I would say probably right in here is the um, center of the of the group. And granted, I'm, I'm shooting a 10 power scope um, at the 300. And here's my 69 grain TMKs. Um, Again, you know, we just loaded these up. Um, they're going just under 3,400 feet per second, and these are going just over 3,600. Um, so those are, are very similar as well. So we'll pull these targets. We'll go back to the firing line, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. Um, this one is fairly accurate. This is the six Creedmoor, the aiming points up there. My calculator said 9.8 inches, and it was 12.37 inches. That was a 70 grain ballistic tips from Nosler. And then here is the 108 ELDM. As you can see, my calculator said 14.2 inches and we got 14.6 inches. So <clears throat> there was just a two inch drop or just under two inch drop between the higher BC 108 and the 70 grain Nosler. And then we'll go over to the 22 GT and my calculator said 10.8, <clears throat> and it was 13.1. Those are the 55 grainers that I just threw some together, not doing low development. And then the 69 grain TMKs, it said it was a 13.6, and it was actually 14.1. Uh, that wasn't too bad. I'm not sure what happened to those two up there, but again, you know, we're not looking for accuracy. We're looking for how much drop on uh, each of the bolts. It is um, pretty neat to see especially on a six Creedmoor, um, those 108 ELDMs shoot so nice. I, I've gotten sub MOA out to 1,000 yards with this before and shot out the 1350 with, with my 18 inch barrel. Um, as you can see the 223, the wind pushed it a little bit and a little bit further drop. Um, sort of expected with the, especially that 45 grain bullet, um, the wind didn't push the um, six Creedmoors very much. And then the um, 22 GTs that didn't push it at all. Those things are going so fast. All right, we're done with our test. We've been out here for a couple hours. The sun's starting to come out finally. A fog lifted. Uh, just some final thoughts on this. So just my take, the 223, the higher BC definitely mattered in the wind. Um, speeds, not too much difference. The 45 grainer dropped a little bit less than the 75 grainer. The six Creedmoor, I was really shocked that they were almost identical. Uh, and then the 22 GT, they were both running over 3,500 feet per second. 
Um, so I wasn't very surprised there. Um, in, in you know the intro, I said, does BC really matter with um, hunting for coyotes? And you should shoot what you want. What you what bullet you like the best? Like I love those seventy grain nozzles. I will always shoot those out of any of the six millimeter guns I have. Um, so see what your gun likes best. Do a test and see which bullet your gun likes and then go from there. If you want the 70 grain bullet, just do the load development. Um, BC matters a lot with wind um, and out past 500 yards, in my opinion, it starts really mattering. Um, so you'll see that 70 grain ballistic tip in that 108. There'll be a big difference out past 500 yards if we do a, a, a test. This range only goes out to 500 meters. Uh, we were limited on time today, so we couldn't go any further. Uh, but another test, we'll see how, how the BC impacts further distances. But for us coyote hunters, it doesn't really matter um, for drop out to 300 yards. Matt, what do you think? Basically, what you said, just reiterate, find out what you like, what your gun likes. Um, when it's those well, hunting situations, you know, if we're taking a, a shooter yard shot across the cornfield, it doesn't matter as much as if you're shooting that safe by. Mitchell, I agree with both you guys. We're going to see it out past 500, but for all the coyote hunting that we're doing, especially here in Arizona and New Mexico, we're not really going to see the discrepancies. Um, maybe wind, but even then, not, not too bad. Yeah. Wind, wind, I think, is a bigger factor than drop with these bullets that we're, we're hunting with. Uh, if you're doing a 223, it matters a lot more, or a 20 practical, or a 204. The smaller the bullet, the wind's going to push it the most, as most of you guys know. So I appreciate everybody watching this video. And if you have any questions, give us a call. You'll probably get mad on the phones. Me on social media. You probably won't even talk to Mitchell, but he's busy in the back. So um, I appreciate everybody. Like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And have a great day.